What's happening, YouTube? Well, not really necessarily YouTube, but we do do some YouTube work. But we also uh, got some things going on in daily motions. So, to start off with, I am Andre Detman, 69, Stupid Minister Faction for the Reality Temple on Earth. Today is uh, May 19th, 2012, and I am making this video and directing everything that I'm saying directly to black people. And when it's all said and done, because this is going to be a long story, man. Uh, this type of issue can go on forever and ever and ever, but I'm going to try to shorten this up in two videos. I know I'm not going to be able to do it in one video, so I'm definitely going to try to do it in two videos time. And this video is titled For Black People Only. Um, I want to say to every self-respecting black person who possess the tiniest, the tiniest amount of love for their own people, okay, I just want to share something with you that, uh, that is not foreign to your ears because you've all heard the, at this many, many times before from your elders your parents, black teachers, and uh, grandparents, and, and it was called being aware of them white devils. Now see, when I was growing up, who I believe to be my friends, I had different kinds of associates, my so-called friends, they was white, Latino, couple Asian people and um, I remember that the Asian guys stayed to themselves they wouldn't mind dealing with you on an individual level but when it came to them associating with you uh, in the group they basically stayed away from that group uh, thing they didn't really too much feel comfortable in the group thing and so I asked one of my uh, associates from who lived in behind me, I was like, man, let me ask you a question, man. Why come it's cool for us to kick it as an individual? But I didn't use them terms at that time. I didn't use them words or say it in that manner, but I'm just kind of shortening it up. Why come you choose to uh, only associate with me as an individual? And he said that it was cool for him to do it like that, but it was cool to deal with people on a mutual term instead of dealing with him, dealing with other people outside his own terms, whereas to where now he's in somebody else's realm. And so it was kind of difficult to understand that, but as I get older, I understand a little bit more because his parents basically told him never to trust anybody outside his race. And specifically, specifically never trust white people at all and now that I think back to the stuff that I was hearing from my father I remember growing up my father would be different places and he would be talking to white men and they were or Latino men and they would extend their hand out and he would never shake their hand I remember this all the way back when I was eight or nine years old all the time I was a teenager that he would never shake, specifically more than, most of the time, a white man's hand. He would just smile and nod at their hands and keep on going. And my, my old man grew up in the South, man. He grew up in Mississippi. My old man was born in 1934. He died in 2008. Uh, and uh, I remember he called me down there once because he was sick. He was dying, and I didn't know he was dying. And at the time, my girlfriend was a white person. She was a white woman. And so when I went down on my own, he wanted me to stay down there and help take care of him and everything. And uh, I said, well, look, man, I've been with this woman for three years, and I wanted to come down here with me. He said, no, 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 no. Now, he was in Florida. He said, no, nah, that's, that's not going to happen down here. So I was, like, wondering why, and he seemed like he didn't really want to 
tell me why the situation was the way it was. And then one night, me and him sitting there, and he said, let me tell you something, son. I ain't never liked the white people. I ain't never trusted them bastards. They said, no good son of a bitches. That's the exact words that he used. And I was kind of offended because my girlfriend was white. My girlfriend of four years at the time was white. So I'm like, man, me and him got into a little argument over it. And so I wind up coming back. I'm like, look, man, if you're going to be racist and stuff like that, man, I'm just going to leave, man. And I left. And my old man died two weeks later. And I regret that very much to this day. But I remember him saying that in the end, you could be friends with them. But at some point in time, it's going to be presented to you. He said this, but he didn't say it in this way. But this is the way I understand it. That they're going to screw you over in some way, shape, or form. When it's all said and done. That they only out for what's going to benefit them. They're not concerned about you. They're only concerned about themselves. And I really didn't want to believe that. And I remember growing up. A lot of things that my grandmother said and my father said about certain whites and he wasn't being very direct about it because he didn't want me to have this racial uh, perspective about white people. But I remember him always saying, be careful. I remember all my, my, wife, my mother always used to tell me, don't be hanging around with them white people because if some shit go down, they're going to accuse you of it. Now, in many cases, this is not always the case. But a lot of times, you will find that to be exactly what it is. That it always turned out that way, in some way, shape, or form. I want to say this to us, black people. I don't care how much a white person smiles and be nice to you how much they could do for you on a material level, how much they seem to be able to, to uh, try to befriend you in some kind of way. They don't mean you no damn good when it's all said and done. In some way, shape, and form, at some point in time, they're going to be able to benefit from screwing you over. Whether it be presented to them from the outside world or whether they stumble across the circumstances where screwing you over is going to benefit them, you screw. And as time went on in my life, I started realizing that. They're some very deceitful people. They're extremely deceitful. They're very manipulated. And a lot of times, they don't even know it. It's so deeply ingrained and conditioned in, into their, uh, uh, their culture and their, uh, and their characteristics that they don't even know it. They, can't even, they don't even understand it. But one thing every white peace person know, and I know they know, that they know that they think different than you. Oh, they know. They know that they think different than you. They are fully aware that you don't have the slightest idea many times what their motives are. You and that person can go somewhere and be attending the same event or in the same circumstances and they have a whole totally different perspective about it than you do. I'm running out of time on this particular video right here, so I'm going to leave it off right here and I'm going to go into the next segment. But um, just bear with me because I ain't done yet.